inside laying down a sacrifice, but they didn't. They stood behind. So it was whenever when Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people arose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door. All the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. They stood at the door. They worshipped from a distance. They worshipped their God from a distance. I believe some of us do the same thing. We worship our God from a distance. And we've seen it in church. And we hold it back. We hold it back. Why do we hold it back? Maybe pride. Or maybe we're afraid to enter the presence of God because it might change us. Maybe we're afraid to get into that holy place because once we get in there and once we start to surrender to God, maybe we might have to surrender something in our lives. Maybe I might have to give up what I'm doing. Maybe I can't be me anymore. Maybe I might have to crucify my flesh. And maybe I can't go where I want to go and do what I want to do. So I'll stand back and I'll let the pastor go in and pray for me. And I'll, I'll let the pastor lay hands on me. And I'll, I'll let the pastor intercede in prayer for me. And I'll just stay back and worship my God at a distance. I don't have to get too involved. I don't have to go that far. But let me tell you something, church. If you don't worship your God in spirit and in truth, you're not going to receive nothing from God. God wants your heart. God wants your mind. God wants your whole heart. He doesn't want just a little bit. He wants your whole heart. He wants total surrenderance. He doesn't want us to stand at, the, at our tent door from a distance. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's not what God desires. God desires a relationship. We read it way back again in the, in the Garden of Eden. He talked with man. They had a relationship. He walked with Adam. But I made him a body. We sin. But the Bible says we, we will all fall short of the glory of God. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have a relationship with our God. What is my point tonight? The point is, we need to know our God. And how do we get to know our God? Through His Word. There's only one way to get to know your God. We call Him our God. I'm our God. What's the sound? But Jesus asked this. Why? Because we don't read His Word. I believe in 2009, it is critical, it is critical that we know the Word of God. Because if we don't know the Word of God, we can defend ourselves against the enemy. Without the Word of God, there is no defense. Sansa Marasa me without any weapons. And your weapon is the Word of God. The Bible tells us this in the book of Ephesians. The sword of the Spirit. That's right, Steve. We need the sword. It's sabi, I say, what by the desk? But we go around and we worship our God from a distance while somebody else has got the sword of Mario Pianinga. No, that's not what God requires. God requires a man that is ready and willing to pick up the sword and to stand for his God. He's looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And he's looking for those who will defend the faith with the gospel. The Bible says that the time of ignorance has passed. We need to know our God. And we need to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. You see, Moses knew God personally. He had, a, he had a relationship with Him. He was allowed access into God's presence. The Israelites were only allowed on the outer court. But they wouldn't even go to the outer court. 
because they were afraid of God's presence. The Bible says, you have not because you ask not. So what is our excuse for not coming into the presence of God? Is it the church or the choir? No, of course not. The problem is we're content with watching everyone else go into the presence of God and maybe hoping that some of it might come our way. We come to church and we stay in the outer courts when Jesus made a way for us to come boldly to his presence. He has made a deposit in us, which is the Holy Spirit. You see, back then, the Holy Spirit did not dwell inside a man yet. The Holy Spirit would only lead man. Today, we don't have that excuse. The minute we called upon the name of Jesus, and when we called upon that name, the Spirit of God was deposited in each and every one of us. Whoever in this room called upon the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Once the Holy Spirit dwells within you, you have a responsibility now. You are, in the book of Acts 1 it tells us that we become what, Pastor? Witnesses? Now we're a witness. Once you've accepted the name of God and you accepted the Holy Spirit and He deposited the Holy Spirit inside of you, you just become a witness. But how can you become a witness when you don't know the God you serve? How can I be a witness and proclaim the name of God when I teach an Amiski Warba? I think it's impossible. I think that I don't, I don't believe there's a way that we can proclaim the name of God and say that we have the Spirit of God if we don't know His Word. He deposited His precious Holy Spirit in every man and woman in this building tonight. And we have a responsibility, church. We need to know Him. He wants to know each and every one of us. Everyone in this city, He wants to know you personally. Malote Janel, your attitude, your personality, He wants to know everything about you. And He does know everything about you. But do we know everything about Him? Do we even try to know about Him? I believe tonight, this meeting tonight, I believe is a restoration meeting. I believe tonight, the Word of God is telling us that what we need to do is come back. Come back to where we first started from. The love of Christ. And I should by it was the Word of God that brought you to Christ. It was the Word of God that pierced our hearts by Angelic Christo. And I believe it's the Word of God that needs to bring us back. I believe we need to study. The Bible says we need to study to show ourselves approved. I believe that tonight is the night that we need to set ourselves apart. The way Moses set himself apart, and he was obedient and led his people. I believe tonight that we need to search in our hearts and we need to figure out what is God requiring from each one of us individually. What is God asking from me? Where am I lacking? Maybe you're not lacking in the Word. Maybe you're not worshiping God the way you used to. Maybe you're not giving God the time that you used to give Him. Maybe you've fallen away and the earthquake and the rocks were split. What is that talking about? That same tabernacle that glowed Moses and the Israelites were not allowed access into that tabernacle, Saspiranga, that would separate them. And only the high priests could enter that tabernacle. 